How is virtualization playing a game-changing role in helping distribution utilities overcome major challenges? To discuss this important topic and the partnership that's enabling it, I'm joined today by A2A, the innovative local energy company that also distributes electricity and gas in Milan and in other local areas. Hello, Arno and Luca, welcome. Hello. To, to start at the beginning, could you talk about a bit about the partnership, how it originated and how it's, how it's sort of structured? Arno, if you'd like to start. Yeah, sure. I think we've been a long-standing partner uh, with uh, A2A and uh, Unarity in uh, particular, uh, looking at you know, digital solutions to manage the uh, distribution grids uh, from the central brains that you know, manage intelligence uh, in the control rooms down to the uh, substation level. Um, and that's how we are you know, now together looking at what are the uh, next needs of our uh, our key customers like A2A and you know how we can you know respond to the uh, you know urgent needs to uh, decarbonize uh, the uh, grid uh, and bring innovative solutions uh, to help uh, foster you know faster adoption of renewable energies and uh, you know EV chargers in particular and can you add to that Luca yes we can count several projects with uh, with Schneider in a lot of the domains. We have a project about uh, grid control, uh, grid automation, and also about innovation. An example also today, we, we sign a, a, a contract about a project with Schneider Electric, uh, an innovative project about uh, a compact substation that we, we really want to use in our, in our grid. And I think this collaboration is very important uh, for us because with, uh, with Schneider, uh, we think we have an uh, the same vision for the future about innovation and digitalization of the grid. Okay, thank you. And that, that sets the scene. So now we get into the nitty gritty. And Arno, to start with you, how can the utility maximize the use of existing infrastructure by incorporating greater intelligence at the edge? Yeah, it's a very good question because uh, obviously the uh, you know, massive deployment of renewables and, uh, and EVs uh, mean that, you know, uh, the networks need to be upgraded, but obviously that's very long and very expensive, uh, which means that you know the shorter term solution is to make sure you can maximize the existing the use of the existing capacity, which is limited by the size of wires, uh, and so enabling to have you know more energy flows flowing through the same capacity is really you know the kind of flexibility game that you know everybody is looking at of you know how we can really make best use of the existing hosting capacity. And can you expand on that from the distribution company perspective, the sort of challenges that that is, you are faced? Yes, I agree with, uh, with Arnaud, but in uh, point of view of the DSOs, I think the challenge for the future uh, is uh, in particular in the secondary substation. We need to digitalize the secondary substation to improve our process. We talk about a virtual world and a virtual digitalization of our asset, but we need to start from this part of the grid. In this part of the grid, we have a lot of our asset that at the moment aren't digitalized. And the DSOs did to start the same process that in the past we uh, we have uh, we, we did in the primary substation. At the moment, the primary substation is the uh, of the asset completely digitalized, and we need to arrive in the same solution also in the secondary substation. But uh, we need to to do in the flexibility way, and uh, we need to work very close uh, with the bit partner like like Snyder to tailorize the, the solution with our. Uh, necessity and to our process. But I think the secondary substation in the, in the future uh, are the most, uh, the, the big challenge for the DSOs. Which brings us on to the virtual substation. And, and can you talk a bit more about that or no? Yeah, if we uh, apply that concept, we, you know, we are looking at really bringing all the uh, intelligent functions at the edge onto a computer world with the aim of flexibility in the sense of being able to very easily change and upgrade applications that can be deployed to the field without needing track rolls uh, to, a, to a substation. So really creating an infrastructure that enables uh, flexibility. So that's really what it is about. So you know, if I had to describe it in, a, in simple words, you know, that's, that's really 
removing all these uh, intelligent head functions about protection, automation, metering, uh, bring all these functions which are today in, uh, in our dedicated electronic boxes and various uh, of them uh, into, a, into a simple computer. Uh, that can be you know updated like we do a windows update you now every now and then right and that's really the key concept to to enable that flexibility or well, you don't need to go back to a substation every time you have a, a change to make so start simply with measurements instrumentation then move to you know um, local controls and maybe add local optimization later on uh, so that's kind of a journey where you can create uh, an infrastructure that will be future-proofed uh, and you can deploy easily new set of applications along the way. And, and from the distribution company perspective, how, how does the virtual substation help to meet the challenges? Yes, um, it's very, very important. The secondary substation, the possibility to virtualize is also our, our goals. Secondary substation um, will be a nub from DSOs and our clients. The secondary substation are the last uh, nodes in the grids before the users. And for us, it's very important uh, this, uh, um, this position. An example, with, in, uh, for a medium uh, voltage, for uh, a secondary substation, it will be very important to increase, an example, the telecontrol and the automation for our uh, secondary substation. But in particular, for a low voltage, at the moment, uh, we don't start to insert this technology in, in this level. But in low voltage, we have a possibility to share with our customer an example information and have information to um, improve our process. Improve our process, uh, an example for the flexibility, as Arnold says, for us is very, very, very important. And also for change all our process. An example, if you have a uh, possibility to telecontrol of each our asset and have a possibility to have an automation with our asset, I reduce the um, intervention in the fields. Then for a, works, for a workers, an example, we um, upgrade, we, we grow the security of our operators. And uh, in the other example, if uh, improve our process, an example, we have a possibility to reduce injury in the in the field this is an effect if we if we increase my automation possibility and telecontrol automation possibility also the workers have a good experience in the in that work right. and, and turning to the technology in particular the PowerLogic t300 what are the requests and feedback and your experiences with that yes uh, very good experience at the moment uh, in, um, in our grid, we have uh, um, 800 T300 installed, and uh, after a period of uh, setting properly the, 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 the asset in the field, we arrive in a very, very, very good solution. And with this asset in our secondary substation, we have all the data we need from the fields, and we have a possibility to uh, telecontrol each situation at this moment. Um, for the future, we are uh, speaking with uh, Snyder. We need to have an, uh, an open view with our, with our asset, and we are working to increase interoperability and the flexibility of that solution. That, in, uh, in simple words, we are using the best solution of RTU in the world, I think, but we have to improve for uh, maybe. Um, to win the new challenges for the futures. And Arno, uh, can you talk a bit more about the technical aspects of the T300 virtualized? Yeah, we're really looking at extending, in fact, the set of applications which are currently hosted in what we call a RTU, a remote terminal unit, which is primarily initially geared towards control on the medium voltage uh, side and some limited monitoring of the, of the low voltage side. Um, so typically, in order to do that today, and we are actually moving towards those solutions in the short term, you know, if we want to start having visibility on the low voltage side, on the, on the different feeders, we are adding meters and we are consolidating meter information into this RTU. 
Um, there may be some protection functions which will be added uh, into that. So the target is really to avoid having you know, as many devices as we have applications to put in a substation because that's very costly, because that you know, needs a lot of maintenance. Uh, and gather all these functions into a, a standard piece of a, of a computer um, so that it can be you know, easily uh, managed and upgraded. So mm. plan for the necessary instrumentation uh, into that hardware and then manage it like a software. Uh, that's really the, uh, the idea of, uh, of the virtualization. And, and Luca, what further challenges do you see ahead for distribution companies? Mm -hmm. this, <clears throat> the challenge uh, is very similar that uh, Arnaud said, uh, said before, because in my vision, I think also for, uh, for Snyder, the software will substitute the hardware. And for us, it's very important, but uh, this challenge is to find uh, which is the correct hardware to install it. I know, I, I agree, is we need to have a general purpose personal computer inside each uh, substation in the futures but we need to decide the characteristics of this hardware because for the futures we have, put, we have to install each app and not install other hardware. An example, an app for substitute the RTU. We want a virtual RTU inside my, my general purpose PC. We want an app, an example, maybe in the future only to collect the data from the smart meters, and I want to change in the future the hardware. I want to use the same hardware, but have the, an app to install to have a new futures, like we have uh, with our our smartphone. If you if you if you think mm -hmm. the same hardware with a app at the moment, maybe I don't know which uh, which are the new app that I needed to install it. That, but the virtualization uh, have the possibility to. Um, to, to, to have that, this situation. For me, it's very important to define the correct specification of our hardware to be ready for the app that I don't mind at this moment. And, and what would be your takeaways for other distribution companies looking at the solution? At the, 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 at the moment, the, the solutions of, of these uh, of this kind, um, the DSOs are, 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 are working stronger for, uh, for, for, for find the, 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 the possibility to, um, to achieve these, uh, these goals. But uh, um, I think uh, another important thing, uh, an example for, uh, for my work in, with uh, my colleagues, I, an example, I define the document specification for all the assets. At the moment, we write a document to define the, the, the specific characteristic of each, asset, of each asset. If you have a possibility to have a completely virtualized asset in, 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 in my secondary substation, my colleagues, an example, can test in the virtual world what happened when, when, when I change some things before to define the final document. I think. Uh, would be an, 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 a, an a challenge, and not only for the SOs, but also for the supplier like Snyder, for uh, optimize the process, because also the process of uh, engineering substation is in a long and hard process. And I think uh, in, with the virtualization, not only when I installed something in the grid, but before installing the grid, could be a very good challenge for the future. And Arno, what, what is the future role of the virtual substation in, in the energy system of the future with distributed energy resources and resiliency? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as Luca mentioned, I think we need to broaden the perspective as well. It's not only about an operating system. Um, it's also how you completely transform the way you manage the life cycle of those applications. Uh, so there is a design piece where um, virtualization will create its own digital twin that can be used in simulation, right? So it's how you can accelerate, for instance, the testing of a control scheme or a protection scheme in a substation, bring it to the design phase instead of leaving it to the last mile of a commissioning of a substation where you are always facing a ton of issues, you're under stress, the hardware is not coming, so everything is getting delayed. So it's, it's a you know, real pain in, uh, in, the, in the deployment uh, of the solutions today. So typically, that can de-risk a project of installing you know, a new substation or retrofitting an existing one uh, because you can test upstream. And so that can you know, ease a lot on the, from a life cycle perspective to, to go faster. 
Then when we talk about um, the uh, upgrades, um, this is really about the uh, perspective of speed of deployment of upgrades, right? Think about you know, now that you have your infrastructure, which is quite standardized, you know, that you can update a control scheme. I don't know, you need to implement some uh, uh, voltage control scheme in the uh, low voltage network. You can distribute that application to hundreds or thousands of substation uh, in a couple of days instead of you know, taking years to go to you know, each and every substation. So uh, I think this would really uh, you know, change the game uh, from that perspective in terms of how it can make the uh, you know, field deployments much more effective, uh, but also help the engineers to standardize applications, test applications upstream, um, and you know, manage much better you know, what is on site, know exactly what is installed at any point, uh, and you know handle it uh, in a in a very uh, let's say productive efficient environment. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much, Arno and Luca, and we look, we look forward to following the next steps in in A two A's journey with the virtual substation. Yes. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Luca. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Arno. For more insights, be sure to join the Endit community.